Bonjour! Aujourd'hui, je vais partager leur livre, Anatoly et leur chat, écrit par Eve Titus. Anatoly and the Cat is a book written by Eve Titus and is one of a series of books about a brave Parisian mouse. Oui, Anatoly est une souris courageuse. His job is first vice president in charge of cheese tasting at a cheese factory in Paris, of course, because what else would a mouse in France do for a job? The word for cheese in French is called le fromage. Did you know there are 400 quatre cents, over 400 different types of cheese in France. So you could eat a different type of le fromage every day for a whole year and even some more days after that. Well, that's a lot of different kinds of le fromage in my opinion. In this livre, Anatoly encounters a cat one night in the cheese factory where he works, and he must come up with a plan to keep out of harm's way. So I wonder how, in your opinion, does he show bravery? Did you agree with this mouse magnifique solution? Or would you have done something a little differently? Do you have a favorite cheese, by the way? Mine is a French cheese, un fromage qui s'appelle camembert. Mm, ooh la la, you will love it if you ever try it. I'd love to know your thoughts and ideas, but now, maintenant, je vous présente Anatoly. Anatoly et le chat. Anatoly and the cat by Eve Titus. In all France, there was no mouse more honored or respected than Anatoly. He was very proud of his job as cheese taster at the factory of Monsieur Duval. Nobody knew that he was not a man but a mouse, not even Monsieur Duval, for he did his work after the others went home. Always his dear wife Doucette blew him a kiss as he left the mouse village and bicycled off to Paris on business. After their six charming children were sound asleep. One night, Anatoly entered the cheese tasting room with Gaston, his good friend and helper. Anatoly tasted some brie and made a face. Too salty. Give me a not so good sign and I'll write it down. Just then, they heard soft footsteps on the floor above. They began to shiver and shake and quiver and quake. It's a cat, cried Anatoly. Still, we must do our job. As long as he stays upstairs, we work. As soon as he starts downstairs, out the window we go. They did their best, but they were much too frightened. Gaston kept dropping signs on the floor, and Anatoly scribbled just anything that came into his head. Alas, I fear I have made some serious mistakes, he said. But it's all the fault of that awful animal. To be a cat is to be a monster and a menace. Then they ran for the window. The cat was on the stairs. They climbed down in a big hurry and bicycled home at about a mile a minute. That night, millions of cats marched through Anatoly's dreams, shouting, Down with Anatoly! Down with Anatoly! At dawn, when the sky turned pale pink, he left his bed as miserable as a mouse could be. At breakfast, he could scarcely swallow his food. The children were upset to see him looking so sad. What is worrying our dearest papa, they asked anxiously. But Anatoly felt they were still too young to learn about cats, and he hurried them off to school. Then he hung his head in the deepest despair. Doucette, there was a you-know-what at the factory. She turned pale. Keller, what will you do? It is with such pride that I earn my family's bread and cheese instead of stooping to take people's scraps. Must I change my honorable way of life because of this beast? But Doucette said, no cat has appeared there before. Perhaps this one came out of curiosity and will never return. Anatoly hugged her. You give me new hope, ma petite. How would I manage without such a jewel of a wife? And he ate his breakfast, for now he had an appetite. At that very moment, the factory was in a hullabaloo. The cheese workers were quarreling like cats and dogs. 
Half of them shouted that they must do what the signs said. The other half screamed that the signs were full of mistakes. They sent for Monsieur Duval, the president of the factory. He came at once with a large cat perched upon his shoulder. Regarde, they cried, pointing to the signs. Monsieur Duval scratched his head, greatly puzzled. What strange signs. I trust Anatolia as I would trust myself. Has he not made our cheeses the finest in all France? Still, it does seem odd to wrap cheese in a banana peel. And who ever heard of using chopped cucumber seeds? Can it be that he has invented some brand new cheeses? Or has Anatoly been working too hard? I shall send him a memo inquiring as to his health. Meanwhile, men, do just what the signs order you to do. And he left the room patting his cat and saying, You did not come home last night. Where were you, mon ami? The cat purred and blinked his bright green eyes. When Anatoly tooted his horn for Gaston that night, his friend appeared at the window holding a little bell. I am a mouse of caution. I do not wish to live dangerously. You must work alone at the factory after this. Mouse-eating monsters are not for me. Then he tinkled the bell. Of course, if you can bell the cat. Make no jokes about such a serious matter. Au revoir. Squeezing under the factory door, Anatoly listened for cat sounds, but happily there were none. In the tasting room, he found a short memo from Monsieur Duval, asking him whether he felt quite right and begging him to take a holiday if he needed one. He went to Monsieur Duval's office and typed a memo in reply. This he left in the typewriter. Now we shall see what we shall see. The memo states Anatoly's dislike for cats and how disturbing it was for one to be in the factory as he did his tasting. If the cat appears again, he states he will be forced to give up his job. The next night, there was a second memo from Monsieur Duval in reply to the memo from Anatoly. At first, Anatoly rejoiced. My worries are at an end. This cat loves Monsieur Duval and will surely obey him. But then he asked himself, is a cat to be trusted? And the answer was, no. The memo states that the cat is a family pet that accompanies Monsieur Duval to work each day, returning home with him at closing time. The cat has received strict orders not to remain in the factory after dark so Anatoly can work in peace. At home, he sat silent, staring at the slanting rain, Remembering Gaston's joke in a tale known the world over, long, long ago many mice had met to decide what to do about a cat. Someone had the idea of putting a bell around its neck. This would warn them of its coming, and all were pleased, until a wise old mouse said, But who will bell the cat? Not one mouse had dared to do it, then or ever. There must be a way, thought Anatoly, pacing up and down. For hours and hours, his brain was busy with ideas, but they all seemed too dangerous until he suddenly remembered a big empty crate in the storeroom of the factory. And Anatoly smiled, for now he had the perfect plan. Before leaving, he asked Doucette for her sash. She was worried. Has it anything to do with the cat, Sherry? Be careful. Not all the cheese in France could replace you. Anatoly kissed her goodbye, telling her nothing. He stopped off at Gaston's and asked for the bell. Gaston guessed the reason. Do not risk your life, I beg of you. But Anatoly began stringing the sash through the top of the bell. The brute will be there tonight. I feel it in my bones. On the way to work, Anatoly entered a pet shop. He took a box of catnip, leaving some camembert cheese in payment. Then he went to a hardware shop. There he took a door latch, leaving some Rockford cheese in payment. Arrived at the factory, he typed a memo in Monsieur Duval's office. He hurried to the storeroom where he tried the door of the crate. It swung to and fro easily, and he hammered the latch into place. 
Then he put the catnip in the crate at the far end. Voila, if a man may build a mouse trap, then a mouse may build a cat trap. He hid himself and waited. Soon his sharp ears heard sounds. Was it the cat or was it the thumping of his heart? It was the cat. Smelling the catnip, he bounded into the crate. Quick as a wink, Anatoly slammed the door, scurried up and latched the latch and scurried down. The angry cat tried and tried, but the door would not open. How dare you trap me, he raged. My name is Charlemagne, and I come from a long line of illustrious cats. My great-great-great-great-great-grandfather was the pet of the Emperor Charlemagne himself. Let me out. Anatoly spoke softly. My dear Charlemagne, what about the catnip? I'll gobble it up and then beware you little nobody of a mouse. But when the catnip was gone, Charlemagne completely forgot about Anatoly. He grinned and began to do all sorts of silly things. Chasing his tail, turning somersaults, trying to stand on his head, and prancing and dancing wildly around the crate. Anatoly waited patiently, not a bit surprised. He knew Catnip did this to cats. At last, Charlemagne grew tired and stretched out and slept. Now or never, thought Anatoly. A sleeping cat cannot pounce. The cat's loud snores were like the rumble of thunder, but the brave mouse did what had to be done. Even tying a big bow when he saw the sash was too long. Then he taped the memo to the crate and went upstairs. To celebrate, he fixed himself a special treat, a triple-decker sandwich with six different kinds of cheese. The inter-office memo from Anatoly to Monsieur Duval states, I have belled your disobedient cat. I can now stop work at a moment's notice and go home without coming face-to-face with a beast I detest. As a businessman, you should understand why it is wise to watch your cat. Upon hearing the news, Gaston gladly returned to work. Sometimes they were bothered by the tinkling of the bell, but Monsieur Duval kept close watch on Charlemagne, and this happened only once in a while. When it did, the two friends dashed madly for the window and climbed down as fast as their legs would let them. One Friday night, Anatoly took his family to see the factory. Bicycling along the boulevard toward Paris, the children said, Papa, did you think we were too young to be told about cats? Our teacher taught us all about them. That was the night the wonderful letter was waiting. My dear Anatoly, because of last month's mistakes, the people of France all had stomach aches. They demanded that I go out of business, but I begged for another chance. Since then, your work has been so good, they have all taken the Duval cheeses back to their hearts, or should I say to their stomachs. And now, my dear Vice President, I have a surprise. On the night of the mistakes, one sign said, add chopped cucumber seeds. This cucumber cheese is so tasty, it has become the people's favorite. Congratulations. In your honor, I have named it Cheese Anatoly, your friend, Henry Duval. Doucette was so pleased that she wept for joy. Paul and Paulette, Claude and Claudette, and George and Georgette all exclaimed proudly, Our papa is so clever that a cheese has been named after him. And Gaston declared, I said it before and I say it once more. He is a mouse magnifique. Viva Anatoly! Anatoly once again became the most honored, respected mouse in all France. And he was also the bravest because for thousands of years, the mice of the world had talked about belling the cat, but Anatoly was the only one who did it.